Good evening, and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the law, the Constitution, and the events of the day to you. Tonight, myself, James Barrett, and Mark Malachowski are going to bring you three exciting subjects that are in the news today. Mark, what have we got covering tonight? Well, first we're going to talk about everyone's favorite buddy, because the government's here to help you, is the IRS, oh. okay, and how that was formed. Next, we're going to talk about FARA, the Foreign Agent Registration Act and APAC, and everyone's favorite lobbyists. And then we're going to talk about PG&E and uh, gas explosions. Yeah, we're talking about the one in 210, but let's, let's start with number one. We've got that, the IRS, everybody's favorite government organization. Okay, well, what do you got for me tonight, Okay, Mark? well, back in the olden days, in <laughs> 1909, there was a President Taft, right? And then he left office in 1913, and the IRS was formed in 1913. Now, about that same time, a little after that, they did the Federal Reserve Act, and then in 1908, a little before that, they created the FBI. They're all kind of the same thing. Wait a minute. Mark, you're mixing up a lot of agencies here. Are you trying to tell me that the operation of the government and the financial structure and the enforcement are all kind of mixed together? Okay, well, this is how it worked. Taft had a lot of banking expertise. William Howard Taft. William Howard Taft. And the Rothschilds and the international bankers who had been working with the United States quite a while. I mean, they loaned money to both sides in the Civil War. Well, okay. that, that's amazing. And so it was the Rothschilds loaned the money to the North, and the Rothschilds' cousins loaned it to the South. Wait a minute. Are there any documents showing that the oh, Rothschilds... Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about it. And then the thing is that what happened was the, the Southerners said, well, we're going to have our own currency, our own bank. And the Rothschilds like, well, wait a minute. No, we, we, there's only one bank. It's the Rothschild Bank. And so they cut off the funding for the South, and that's why they lost. Um, so this has been going on for a long time, is the Rothschilds, basically, they don't want to lend money to private people because they can go bankrupt. And they loan money to governments because governments can always raise taxes. And the most profitable thing to loan governments for is war. So there's always, they have to keep wars going because that's the most costly thing. Wait a minute, you know the wars uh, going back to the Civil War are all very costly, yeah, yeah. let alone the Revolutionary War, which nearly bankrupt America. Yeah. Well, that was, be, the, the Rothschilds weren't really in the funding on that because we didn't even have enough money for them to charge the interest. But anyway, <laughs> so, but anyway, so what happened is that Taft was in 1909 and, and he was very uh, sophisticated about banking and so they had to get rid of him because they wanted to put the Federal Reserve in. So Taft resisted the Federal Reserve. And if you, if you go back to Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson was amendment. He was saying, we don't, I mean, he was very, we do not want to have um, the, you know, a, a private bank printing the money. It should be printed by Congress, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying back to Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. He, had, he, he looked at what was happening. And he, and he said, wait a minute, this is the all money that's generated in our country that will be the basis printed. for our value. Our currency. Our, yeah, currency. our currency will be based on only... Congress can print the money. Nobody else. But nobody else. Okay, because he saw what happened with other countries. But wait a minute, when we got the Civil War, the South was printing their own money. That's why they... Because the South started to have their own bank. And so the Rothschilds cut the, off their, their loan money because they're going, I don't want someone with their own bank because the South... All the, all the southern banks up to them had been Rothschild banks. Okay. Well, wait a minute, and wait then, a minute. And that's, a, that's incredible. You know, this, none of this is ever taught and in then this also, history. Well, well, if you look at it, also, the Rhode Island Marxists, 75% of those Marxist families had black slaves, and only about 2% of white Christian families had slaves. So it was the Marxists who ran the slave trade. The Marxists had, were the captains of the slave trade ships, and they were also the owners of those ships. Okay, and they made all the money in the slave trade. But they said, oh, it's the white Christians. But that's just not true. And also, only about 10% of the slaves went to the USA. 90% went to South America, right? And about 11 million slaves died on the crossing, right? About 11 million. So about a million died going to the US, but about 10 million died going to South America. So the majority of them weren't even coming to the United States. But the Rhode Island Marxists were in charge of that slave. So the 10 million or 11 million that died Let's say 10 million, the Marxists were responsible for it. Wait a minute, said, how does all of this have anything to do with the IRS? Well, the, because the IRS is the way that the Rothschilds collect the VIG. Once they put the Federal Reserve in, and they, okay, once they put the Federal Reserve in, they loan money and you get into a debt slave, 
then they got a monopoly on the banks and the monopoly on the banks means they can leverage 10 times that means they can loan the same dollar 10 times so instead of paying instead of uh, getting 8% compounded interest, they're getting 80% compounded interest, which is called usury. Okay, and well, then, that is usury, but okay, wait a minute. How, hang on, how, hang on, hang on. Taft is, resisted all this. Right. Now, what, well, now, you know, after Taft was Woodrow Wilson, and, then he and Woodrow knew, Wilson was a globalist. Nothing, but he knew nothing about but he banking. Knew, but he was a globalist. But he knew nothing about banking. And he was a progressive, so funny they, enough. So they got rid of Taft, and they put... Wilson in charge of the Senate Banking Committee, <laughs> right? And he knew nothing about banking. And then they made him president. And then he's the one who put in the Federal Reserve. And the FBI was formed. Okay, so the, the IRS was formed to, like, get tax money to pay off the, the loans that the Federal Reserve's made to the Americans, right, to pay the VIG at 80% and give that to the Rothschilds. And the FBI was put in there to protect the Federal Reserve. This is unbelievably complicated. But, so well, let's get down to a simple thing. Okay, first of all, the IRS could not be created, but it was created under a, a, a constitutional amendment. Is that correct? Okay, it was, okay, William Taft was born in Ohio, so it came in when he was there. Um, he, he, he was born in Ohio in 1857. Ohio didn't become a state till 1953, right? And so his administration was kind of quasi anyway. And the uh, and Ohio ratified it in 1913, but that was 34 years before Ohio even became a state. Well, wait a minute. It, but if Ohio is not a state, how are they having anything to do with the ratification of the 16th Amendment, which is actually the whole basis for the IRS has got to be the 16th well, Amendment? Well, there's That's never, always a controversy. There's never been a Supreme Court case on this. Okay. Now, the question is, beyond this, is from what everything I've researched on this subject alone, the amendment that was passed through all the states who were trying to ratify it was different language in every state. Right. So how is it possible that the 16th Amendment created the IRS when, in fact, the wording from the original amendment that was supposed to be voted on by all the states for ratification never was the same amendment? Well, how did that even come up? Because past? Wilson was on the take. And what happens when you, get, when you become a debtor, right? Okay, let's say you, you buy a car and you don't pay your payment, what happens? They get repossessed the car, of you course. You buy a house, what happens? Hey, you get evicted. Okay, what happens if you loan, if you borrow money as a corporation? <laughs> well, you can go bankrupt. No, they put people on your corporate board and run your corporation. Oh, of course they do. And what if a king borrows money? Well, then he's got to put people into power, like dukes and earls. Yeah, dukes and earls who are work for the bank. And what if you have a republic like us, then you've got a staff, like we've got 36 Israeli citizens who work for the Rostrals in Congress right now, right? And most of our State Department and FBI is all Israeli citizens who work for the Rothschild. So right. for, because we're in debt, we are controlled by international bankers. We're not controlled by who we vote for. It's got nothing to do with the Constitution. We're debt slaves because we're $150 trillion in unfunded liabilities. And in, in, to get another loan, we have to make another concession like, okay, you have a monopoly on the banks. Okay, you got a monopoly on the newspapers, and that became a monopoly on the TV and a monopoly on Facebook and found. But these are all monopolies that are granted to the people who hold our debt. Well, this is really interesting because then the IRS goes out to the public and collects money, so you can so pay, they the pay the debt, pay, pay the debt, pay the eighty percent usury, right? You know, so that's why they and they, then they have the FBI to protect the bank. Remember, uh, remember Bonnie and Clyde. Of course, they were heroes of the times because up to nineteen thirteen. People were free. They had state banks, right? And then when these globalists took over the banks, these people started robbing banks. So they were heroes, right? Yeah, because and, they were coming down on the man. Yeah, and, effectively and, and, coming down. And who fought Bonnie and Clyde and, you know, the FBI? The FBI. So the FBI are there to protect the globalist bankers. They have nothing to do with helping Americans at all, and they never have. Well, that's a, that's an interesting story. But what happens when the IRS is used as an attack force against those those poor innocent citizens? Okay. Well, what happens when they install a president, for example, like they like the Clintons and the Bushes? They install those, okay. And if they're not happy with the the Clintons and they're not getting their vig paid and they're not getting more monopolies, then they'll 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 fund the opposite party. Well, why don't we hold it right there because this goes into a whole nother category of crime at a at a governmental level. But Mark, what's our next subject for the well, night? Well, the next one is APAC, which is the um, remember I had the friends of Bill? Oh, of course. And so they get the 130 million dollars <laughs> from uh, Russia. <laughs> yeah. But that wasn't Oh, back to uranium the, one that yeah, we covered one, many that times. That wasn't really from Putin. That was from a friend of Bill. A friend. And also if you have an email to your friends, 
that you, know, you work for the State Department, they don't count because it's to your friends. It's right? a friend, and, and those Co those are all private. And then when Comey gives stuff to his friends at Columbia University, oh, yeah, the professor it doesn't matter if he wrote who's it out a secret he, FBI agent of some sort. Yeah, he's an ad hoc guy. Ad hoc. Uh, and then it doesn't matter, you know, if you're talking to the president about national security because it's personal and those are your friends. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. National that, security is personal. I, it's so, Mark and Jim. Uh, Come but, on, so let's get to it, has man. The same thing. This is this is the Israeli lobby, right? But they're not registered under the Foreign Fara. Agents Registration Act, and they're the only country on the planet who is not. And why not? Because, oh, we're the friends, oh, we're the the friends, friends of Israel. We're all friends. So it's all friends of hey. Israel, friends of Israel. They're one of our friends. Okay, so anyway, in, in APEC... It's almost like they're a good fellow. Yeah, they're a good fellow. <laughs> they're friends. And so what, what APEC, APEC is a pro-Israel lobby. It's probably the strongest, best organized, and most affected lobby network in Washington, D.C. For the 2015-2016 election cycle, the pro-Israel network had already spent $4 million in change, $4.2 million in contribution. The largest single amount of 20, uh, 260,000 went to guess who? Wait a minute, I can only guess. Who? Wait a minute, well you gotta go like this. <laughs> yeah. no. To Senator Charles Schumer. Oh, Nate Big Gunn. Chuck! Okay, now Senator Charles Schumer is the one who said, and he said, well, we've got to give $30 billion to Israel. Of course we do. And of course, he voted on that. He didn't recuse himself and go, well, I got a quarter million dollars from these guys. Maybe I shouldn't vote Only on Only a quarter them. million? <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like you got underpaid. That's that's on the in the white. Wait a yeah. minute, I have a question, though. Wasn't uh, President Trump uh, Trump, the first president, to go to APAC and give a speech. Everybody's got to go APAC. Every, if you don't go to APAC, you're kind of really messing well, up. Well, sometimes the, uh, you know, Hillary's FBI deep state uh, hunting accident. Oh, hunting accident. Yeah, yeah. So you tend to, you tend to have, or a, you can, uh, you you have an accident. Come, or you can come out of Reverend Reich's church, and yeah, then, of yeah. course, we know who those so, are. So that's kind of interesting. Now, another thing that's interesting, I think, a lot is Univision. Now, Univision is obviously a lobbyist for Mexico. And they're not. But they are not claimed, they're not, and they're not registered. But they're not we know they're not registered. They're not with they're, Farah. Oh, of course not. And so they're not kind of, really uh, a. They're not doing any lobbying. No, no, they're not. They're doing not doing any. Oh, by the way. Yeah, it's like open borders. Oh, open borders. Okay, and the reason they've got to have the open borders for both Israel and Mexico is because, okay, the dapper Dan or the the brainy Dan, who's an Israeli citizen from Ukraine. He brings the heroin in from Afghanistan, right? Uh, I don't want to. Uh, oh, man, that, that's, the whole drug thing is. Okay, then they go. You're to, trying to tell me the government is run by drugs. Well, Mark. I'm not saying that. That's not the white money. The, I, we just explained the white money. The black money, okay, comes through Europe and then it goes through Mexico and it comes up to the border. That's eighty billion dollars a year, right? And it's also the prostitution of the chicks, sh you know, the white the white girls they they, they they sell as prostitutes, and then the methamphetamine. Now that is well, why that comes out of North Korea. Now that's why they need. Well, that's R Romania. It's the big one. So um, anyway, what happens here? That eighty billion that they make on the drug trade. Okay, you know how much Soros put in these local elections for this midterms? I have no idea. Thirty billion. Where do you think he got that? He got that off the heroin deal. And so that's why Schumer keeps the border open because that's their black money. That's their spending money. This quarter million here and a million here, and this four million dollars, this is just changed. So it's like you're driving around in a Jaguar. Where'd you get the money? Well, I got a quarter million, right? But they have to have some but wait a minute. money. To, you to, would actually, you could actually argue the reason they're opposed to the wall is because, because they they, the it'll inter, interfere with the heroin trade. Oh, of course, because the heroin is one of the biggest government uh, fundraising things the United States has. It's a huge, it's $80 billion a year. And not only that, heroin's really good because once you try it, you're addicted, right? And then you can, you know, so these but people... But it's always a friend that gives it to it's you. It's always a friend. friend. It's, a, it's oh, a friend of it's Bill. It's a friend, a friend of Bill. <laughs> friend of Bill. So that's what's kind of interesting here. And then also you've got, you know, the same, you know, the Rothschilds in on this thing. And so you've got, like I said, 36 people in Congress, right, who, you know, they all get funding from APAC. And Israel launders all the drug money and also cleans up all the money. But for some reason, APAC and Israel are completely exempt from FARA. And, and, and then also, Univision and all the people with the open border for Mexico, completely exempt from Bob Completely Bob. exempt. And that just Oh, my God. Why would that be? And it just happens to correspond with moving $80 billion of illicit drugs in the United States and giving this enormous cash cow that you don't have to pay taxes on or report. Well, i got to tell because you. Because they're I, friends. They're, they're wait friends. a minute, because yeah. they may be friends. <laughs> they're but friends. you know what? There's been a lot in the news about John Kerry trying to negotiate the Iranian nuke deal even behind President Trump back. Is he a registered agent with FARA? Well, that's the that's another act that goes to that one. But um, <laughs> that's the Logan Act. But I'm not going to get into Logan Act. That's a whole other show, okay? But every 
foreign country except Israel represented in Washington by foreign agents registered under the Foreign Registration Act. Okay? A country in question is absolutely banned for participating in American elections. Now, does APEC participate in American elections? I would say yes. That okay. would be a yes, Mark. Every contact the agents have with Congress, does Univision do this, must be reported to the Department of Justice, along with how and where they spend their resources. Every penny and every contact. Every uh, well, that's yeah. funny because 99% isn't reported. Okay, APEC represents Israel government, not Americans, despite the thinly veiled ruse that it represents some Israeli citizens who also happen to hold American citizenship because they're dual citizens. They're dual citizen. They're dual citizen, right? They have a right to. They actually, not only that, but well, when you mention the Iran nuke deal, it's kind of interesting because Israel never fi signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and we don't know about their biological and biochemical. I mean, we have no idea. Well, but, they're saving it for Iran. Yeah, right. And any okay, so anyway, anybody, or Syria, as whatever anybody comes up who first. violates FARA, right, ten thousand dollars or imprisonment by m not more than five years, and they also are subject to deportation. So I mean. You know, these guys have, APEC's got tens of thousands of violations. Well, let, but nobody let's touches just, them. hang on, hang on. But there are special friends. There are special friends. There are friends of friends. There are friends of friends. They're special friends because they brought hey, over. They're one of ours. They brought over the black bag. Hey, here's the yeah, black yeah, bag. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. And when Chuck opened his door <laughs> yeah, in his like, garage, oh, he realized, oh, the bag's been here. Yeah. It's Santa Claus. Oh, it's Santa Claus. Santa Claus. That means we must allow the border to stay open. <laughs> so we got the border's got to stay open, and the we border got, must stay open. And we can't out at the Federal Reserve. We can't out at the Federal, Federal Reserve. Reserve. No, no, no. Heaven forbid. And we can't. And we can't have Congress print money. We got to have some foreign global oh. print the money. And then when, like, when Bernie Sanders goes to Bernanke, what did you do with that two trillion? He goes, I'm not telling. I don't ah, have to tell. Ah, ah. I'm above the law. So two trillion is like change to these people, right? It's well, changed. I gotta tell you something. I, uh, you know, Mark, I need an interest, <laughs> one day interest on that tr two trillion. Well, I'm saying usury is the oldest trick in the in the world, and when you can leverage ten times at eight percent, you're charging eighty percent. I like so, this big argument. So if I like you, the, so, the Rothschilds so and the big argument. So if you are if you are lending money at eight percent compounded, and I lend you a dollar in nine point two years, you owe me two bucks, right? But if I'm doing eighty percent. That's like 1.2 years. So let's say you got a trillion dollar war. The next year it's two trillion, four trillion, eight trillion. That's how we got to be. Well, with a debtor nation, we're like 150 trillion dollars in debt, and actually, I would argue 240 trillion in debt. Okay, I think we should leave it off there with that 240 trillion dollars or whatever that magic number is, because Mark, what is our next subject? Well, the thing is, I have some new ski equipment I wanted to try out, and uh, we'll just see how things work. Well, I don't know about you, but that uh, that looks like you're about ready to hit the slopes. Okay, yeah. Oh! I got some new... Yeah, just put it right All in right. there. One of our studio aides. One of our studio aides doing a, Thank a you very much. job. And we might need it. We might need a little bit more, but we'll try it. It's okay. So anyway, we'll just see how this goes. What is our third subject, Stand -stand Masked by, Man? This is... Whoa! This is... Um, well, I think we better just do this because we're not going to get the effect we're looking for. Okay, this is kind of like San Mateo when you use the old pipe that you oh, throw he away. used the PG&E pipes. <laughs> the PG&E pipes, yeah. Did so, this just remind me of September 12, <laughs> 2010, so when that? they used pipes that were not welded properly and the whole neighborhood blew up. Is that so, what happened, Mark? Okay, 40 people injured, I think four people killed. And what was the reason? The reason was, Jim, why don't you start off here? <laughs> well, I will tell you that PG&E, because of their repairs that they did on a regular basis, would use pipes that weren't even cleared or tested to be used. Don't touch that. I will not touch that. <laughs> In fact, this reminds me of a Halloween story, but so does PG&E. What they used were pipes that were not welded properly. They used, they used pipes that could not withstand the pressure. And because of all the building and all the new developments, residential developments, PG&E pumped a higher pressure amount of gas through pipes that weren't even qualified for half the pressure. Okay, let, let, me, let me go into this just a little more detail. Okay, so let's say you've got a piece of steel like this, right? Imagine this is a piece of steel and you want to make a pipe out of it, right? What they use is rolled steel. You roll that steel together, right? And now if you're going to use a gas pipe, it's not like a water pipe, you've got to weld the inside of the seam and the outside of the seam. So when you're done, you have a pipe that's been welded on the inside. And that means you're totally up. sealed and double strength. Well, what it means is it can withstand pressure, pressure. pressure fluctuations too because it's a, it's a matter of tensile strength because it's going to be expanding and going like this as your pressures vary, right? And you're going to be under high pressure. Now, what happened with PG&E? 
they bought some defectively manufactured pipe that had been sealed on the outside, welded on the outside, but it wasn't welded on the inside. And nobody even bothered to look. No, no. So they went out and they used it, and then someone said, someone inspected it, goes, well, this is bad pipe. Let's get rid of it. Did they destroy it? No. Did they, they saved it. They put it in the courtyard <laughs> on a pile of things. And, and so they a pile some, of pipe. And then if several years later, when they needed some pipe to fix something, hey, they said, pipe? oh, here's some pipe. Oh, here's some pipe. But they didn't inspect that, right? And so what they did is they put that flawed pipe in that was not what we call it was a flawed material construction. And then when the pressure hit it, it couldn't stand it. It blew up. Like I said, it killed, I think, four people. It killed eight people. Okay, and, and then but you know injured about funny. Do you know who one of the people were that it killed? Who's that? It killed the woman in charge of overseeing PG&E's high-pressure pipes was who lived there. Her oh, name was Craig. Okay, and so that was her house? That was her house. <laughs> well, that's... She was living, and her I believe it was her and her daughter died. Oh, my gosh. And this is very ironic that the woman that's involved well, or supervising PG&E's uh, process uh, unfortunately, men are demise on this. Well, I think that it's a terrible thing, even how guilty they are, because you could put a conspiracy. It's, on a, that, Mark. it's a terrible <laughs> thing. But the thing is, what the PG&E lawyers claimed. Ooh. Yeah, the, I said, don't touch that. Thing. I'm not. Touching. Don't be touching those things. He's it's touching it's, me, buddy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> be out. careful. Yeah, it's alive. It, it's starting to move a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we should put this away. Okay. It's starting well, to be get careful. A, there, big guy. It's starting to get a little. It is bubbling. Yeah, and by the way, it's starting it to get, could be September 10th <laughs> again. It's starting to get a little crazy. But anyway, the point is what the lawyers said, they used seamless pipe. And that was the story they gave to the press. And of yeah, course, the well, press. That's not quite what happened. The press always, you know, doing what they're told. You mean so, always listening to what they're told? Always saying what they're, they're saying. And reporting what they're told. <laughs> saying what they're told to say instead, instead of saying what really happened, went ahead and reported the seamless pipe the story. The seamless pipe story and of course that was nonsense um but what really happened was it was a defective pipe that a routine inspection would have found it was gross negligence to say the least oh was it extremely careless okay. <laughs> it was extremely careless okay it was extremely careless it wasn't gross negligence it wasn't gross negligence it was extremely and careless it wasn't under federal law yeah, that yeah, it was gross yeah. negligence yeah so it was, it was careless it was careless it was extremely careless where have we heard that so it before? doesn't raise so I, it doesn't have no raise. prosecutor would no ever prosecutor would ever prosecute, prosecute this. this yeah it's so funny <laughs> yeah. that there's such a correlation <laughs> yeah. between that so anyway so I like, think, wait a minute did the pg e eliminate thirty thousand emails I, I think that they just eliminated every email. <laughs> 40 people. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so this was a total cover-up. It was a total, you know, I would say it was uh, it, reckless endangerment. It definitely reckless. Reckless and dangerous, and I would say that would be manslaughter. It could be. I would, no, I, I would say manslaughter. Weren't they talking about prosecuting on a criminal level on this? Yeah, of course they didn't because they but got they paid didn't. off. Of course, they they, off. you know, they settled with all... You know, there was 100 cases filed in San Mateo Superior right. Court. Right. And you know what's funny? It was seamless pipe. It was a seamless pipe. It was a seamless Here pipe. Go, man, Nobody knows. Hey, Nobody knows. On, it's, Nobody a knows it's, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's and a mystery. And by the way, it was the best pipe they could ever buy. Yeah, it was the best pipe. That, it's, the best, <laughs> it's the best pipe that a, you, a politician you could buy. Yeah. You know, so the best politician you could buy and newspaper you could buy. It was buy. only San Bruno. Yeah, so <laughs> that was, uh, that's what happened there. And there's all kinds of protocols. And, you know, you can, folks, you can look this up in the federal thing because they did the research on it. But that's all long and very complicated, and they kind of buried this one fact in there under the millionth page. But the fact of the matter is, it's supposed to be welded on the inside. This pipe was not. Not welded. And if you don't weld it on both the inside and the outside, when you get that pressure, high pressure of gas lines. It's going to explode. Then you're going to lose it. Or the potential for explosion is high. Well, you, but the problem is, is that any kind of friction is enough to give the spark. You don't actually need much, you don't, you don't need a lighter to start this up. No, not at all. Because it's moving through the rocks. Yeah, and, because, I mean, of course. You know, static electricity, there's plenty of spark because it's highly flammable, combustible. Well, you realize stuff. that pg and was fined $244 million as a Is that result. why my bill went up? Yeah, that's my, yeah, my <laughs> bill went up because they were yeah. paying off. And by the way, they were told they couldn't raise the bill. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, like, they yeah, were told yeah, that yeah, one, yeah, right? Yeah, tell that you one. can't raise the bill yeah, right. on every every client yeah. to pay for this fine. Yeah, right. And they said, oh, of course, of course we not. No, of course we, do we that. won't yeah, raise yeah. the bill. Magically, your bill's gone up about 50%. Yeah, wait, well, then. that's a seamless bill. Oh, that's a seamless bill. It just oh, seems like it. It's just, a turnkey <laughs> operation. It, it just seems like your bill went up. It just seems. Oh, by the way, it's your imagination. Yeah, it's a seamless. Look scene. this way. Yeah, look at this way. There's nothing so, to see here. So PG&E is, of course, kind of like a government monopoly in a way. 
And uh, even though I think most of the time they do a pretty good job, this was really, uh, really bad. And I think it shows that, you know, they kind of need more inspectors, you know, internally to watch this kind of things. And well, wait a minute. You're saying within PG &E. Within PG &E. oh, yeah. Okay, because... They probably have to fund their in internal inspector group. Well, did, wasn't there something that wasn't exactly like this? The hexachloride in the Central Valley. Isn't this PG and E again with their pumps and the, the what's her name? The uh, uh, yeah, the, the the girl who yeah, she got the, busted in Lake Hagasu, didn't she? Yeah, or for, right. for the drunk boating or right, something. Right, drunk boating. But anyway, uh, yeah. But isn't the same kind of idea though, where they just try to bury everything? They get rid of the documents. They get rid of all the evidence is trying to be destroyed. I mean, they do it. It's so interesting. Bleach that, bit. What? Bleach bit. Yeah. Bleach, <laughs> bleach bit. Bleach. I, bit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I wait a minute, Jim? Jim, hold on a second. Um, can I take a look at your phone here? <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah. here, wait a minute. We got it. Wait a minute. I got to give it to Comey tomorrow. Here's yeah. my phone. Yeah, right, yeah. Get, here you go. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, hey, oh, by the way, I got. I got. To, I got to make sure it's ready to be turned <laughs> over to the turn FBI. Oh, right, right. the FBI tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, by the way, FBI. Uh, I'll hammer in the With morning. With Lois Lerner. I'll now let's in. go, Lois Lerner, IRS, <laughs> yeah. FBI, and there's my hammer. Yeah. I'll hammer in the morning. I'll hammer in the evening. Yeah, hammer, hammer all day, all, all day long. long. Hammer all the day long. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say that when you're a quasi-government uh, entity like these, um, you know, the what happens is the press is supposed to watch this, but the press is so corrupt it's actually a complete joke. Well, I, I gotta tell you, Mark, I think tonight we're gonna kind of call it, but I'm gonna tell you something. Hammer in the morning. Hey, we're gonna hammer in the morning. <laughs> hammer we're gonna in hammer the evening. evening. Hammer all we're gonna the hammer all day long. long. And then that's not enough. We'll call out the bleach pit. <laughs> yeah, right. Well. So I, I th want to thank everyone for joining us. And the next time you'll see us, we'll still be hammering it will because be hammering. we're looking for the analysis of why that cell phone was hammered. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Anyway, Mark. So uh, I really kind of calmed you down and there. That was pretty amazing. It kind of calmed down. It actually. Well, very it, calm. it equalized.